This is Rob Tabbert for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. Delighted to be joined for the first time in a while, certainly first time face-to-face -face in a while, by the Commonwealth Cruiserweight champion, the gentleman Chris Billum-Smith. It is a Coley Glavatsky fight week here in the Matchroom bubble. How are you doing, Chris? All good. Cheers, mate. Yourself? All good, mate. All good. Very, very glad to be here, as I'm sure you are to be here and also to have me here, of course, um, ahead of your fight with Vasil Dukar. Um, not the fight that we expected you to have for this, of course. We, we were expecting a few months ago, at least, for you to be boxing for the British title. You're not. Um, disappointed? Uh, in, in a way, uh, I was, because obviously it's such a prestigious belt, the British title. It's one that every British boxer wants to box for. But look, I'm glad to be fighting. I'm lucky that I got out in August. I'm lucky I'm getting out now and I've got an opponent now. Um, so all eyes are on Saturday and I'm excited for it. Now, a week and a half, two weeks ago, you were, were, were without an opponent. Uh, just talk to us a little bit about the kind of the process of getting an opponent sorted and how you ended up on Vasil Dukar. Uh, well, obviously, I'm not actually physically involved with asking who and when and what and where. But, uh, yeah, there was a lot of names got chucked to us that we took and about, I think it was about five or six opponents in the end didn't take it. And then Vasil Dukar took the, took the fight. Um, so... He, I, I know what he's about. He's, he's a tough, tough fighter. But yeah, it was uh, it was frustrating. Uh, you know, training without an opponent, but still kept training, training well, and uh, just glad we got someone now. You mentioned about Vassil Dukar, kind of knowing what he's about. If you look on Boxrec, you could could fool yourself into thinking that this is going to be a walkover job, um, as, as you know, a lot of people have have talked about in the build up to this fight. They've not heard of Dukar before, but a dangerous opponent. We've seen him in with uh, Egorov. We've seen him in with uh, Pesar, who of course we've seen over on these shores a couple of times before. How dangerous a fight is this for you? Yeah, it really is a potential banana skin because I'm um, I'm expected to win because he's got three losses and. Uh, and obviously I'm sort of the, the, the home fighter and all that, but it's, yeah, he's, he's, it's a dangerous fight. He can definitely punch. He's got eight knockouts and nine wins. Um, the only person he hasn't stopped was actually someone I did stop, so I'm hoping that will be playing on his mind. But, uh, and, but no, he was, look, he, he's, he's a lot tougher and uh, very, very durable, but not in the sense of like just a journeyman durable. You know he can fight. He, he's got. He can. He can box a bit. He can punch. Um, so it's a dangerous fight Saturday, and I've, I've definitely got my hands full. Preparing for this fight, of course, you've been preparing alongside Lawrence Akoli, stable mate, who's going to be boxing for the World Cruiserweight title against Christoph Glavatsky this weekend. Couldn't really get any better sparring for your return to the ring. What with Lawrence? Yeah, I mean, I didn't do too much sparring with Lawrence this, this camp because uh, obviously he's fighting the South Pole. But we did do a bit at the beginning, um, and I've had some really good sparring um, with the likes of. Uh, some, some lads uh, Alpha Wolf is what he's known as on Instagram um, so uh, Miller yeah he, he was uh, in for sparring Ben Vickers and, and a few other names as well so it was uh, had some good, good sparring and uh, good tough sparring and perfect I think for this fight Frustrating little period I mean we've, we've seen you, not seen you in the ring since you boxed Nathan Forley of course that went early um, not an ideal time for, for a lot of fighters at the minute but grateful for the opportunity then and now I'm sure yeah, for sure. You know, it's it's a tough time for everyone. Um, I think with the, the, the obviously I had a whole camp in November and was still trying to get an opponent when when uh, Dion pulled out. Um, we couldn't get a replacement then, but this time we found a replacement. So I'm like I said, I'm just glad I've got a fight. And uh, yeah, it, it could be frustrating, but at the same time, you got to count your blessings. Have you kind of given up hope of the Juma fight now? Obviously, you still want to box for the British title, but we still don't really know what's going on with, with Dion Juma and his situation with regards to his injury. What are your thoughts on that whole situation? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I heard rumours that it was a torn retina. Um, I've heard that he might not be back. I heard that he, he was back in training and things like that. So no, I just hope he's healthy. He's, he's a good boxer. Me and Dion have shared the ring uh, as amateurs and a lot of times as far. And so I just hope, you know, he's healthy and, and whatever decision is made, he can uh, he can be happy with it. It'd be great to see him box again. But obviously, there's no point putting your eyesight or health at risk. Now, another McGuigan's gym um fighter in the bubble this week of course Anthony Fowler um, will be his well his third fight under Shane McGuigan the first one was something of a an interesting <laughs> an interesting bout should we put it that way um, how's he been looking at the gym word on the street is he's been making a lot of improvements yeah he's looked fantastic uh, I think it was his his last 12 round spar he did I think it's the best I've seen him um, that's definitely the best I've seen him spar 
and he uh, yeah he looked fantastic and he's obviously massive at the weight at 154 like and I've just seen Fortea this morning he doesn't look that big can obviously box and was obviously durable you know he's had some good fights with some some big names um, but I think Fowler could be uh, could get on top of him and definitely get him out there because he, he's looking great at the moment been around a year there thereabouts now since Fowler's been with the camp um Obviously an interesting character, I think it's fair to say for everybody. Um, what's it been like him kind of bedding into the gym and the time that you've spent together in the last year? Yeah, it's good. You know, he's a, he's, he's a good laugh. I didn't really know what to think of him at first because all I knew of him was social media, which uh, we all know what he's like on there. He's, he's uh, busy, to say the least. Uh, but no, he's, he's been great to have around. He's a very positive lad. Um, you know, he's, he's a hype man. He, he's, he's also like a, someone you can, you can talk to about new mistakes and things like that and tells you what where to what things to do with stuff you know he's been around he's had so many you know 200 odd amateur fights he's he was on gb for years he sparred some great people so it's the, the amount of knowledge that's in the gym um with shane barry lawrence um fowler and obviously campbell and obviously the previous one you know all that knowledge is great for me because i'm from a little town in bournemouth where you don't know you know no no one's ever heard of a box from bournemouth other than freddie mills so um it's great that I've got all that knowledge around me all the time I could constantly learn from. We were going to talk about Bournemouth later on in the interview. We might as well start talking about it now, seeing you've mentioned it there. Um, that's still, I know, a very prominent part of your, your thought process with your career boxing in Bournemouth. Get through this, and there's talk of potentially, maybe sometime this year, going down to Bournemouth, which is a significant carrot to be dangled for you. Yeah, I mean, I'd absolutely love that. Just, just to, It just gets the ball rolling towards the, the ultimate dream of boxing at, at being caught. Um, but, you know, I just want to box back down there on a televised show. That'd be brilliant. I think the town would be buzzing. In the summer makes sense because, I mean, it is busy enough in the summer, to be fair. But uh, obviously, nice sandy beaches and, and it'd make a great show in the summer. Um, but, yeah, that'd be, be great if we can get through Saturday night. Um, unscathed and then get, move on to a, to a Bournemouth show would be brilliant obviously I've got my good friend Lee Cutler on the card as well this weekend um, so yeah both get wins and it makes it even more of a you know more of a realistic dream Talk about Lee Cutler first time I've actually met him face to face in the bubble I know that you've been trying to kind of get him on cards or you've, you've been looking to get him on cards for a long time now I'm kind of assuming that role now is that you know the senior figure in, in Bournemouth boxing but a great opportunity for him on a big platform yeah, I mean, look, he's got a good team around him. Um, he's got Kev Thornley as coach and Steve Bendel, who I worked for for years. Uh, I worked for, started working for Steve 10 years ago and uh, probably over 10 years now. I think I was about 19. And then obviously when I turned pro was when I stopped working for him. So uh, me and Steve helped build his gym up and Kev's now doing that as well. And he's, they're doing a great job down there and they've got a few pros. Um, they've managed to get him on this car, which, you know, they, they were going to have him out on the Dillian White car, but before it got moved. Um, and also the previous card, they were like stand-ins if anyone got COVID. But uh, it's, it seems like fate has, has made it. So we're both boxing on the same card, which is great news. Um, and yeah, I, it's, it's great to have him have him here. And, and Lee's always, you know, pushed me in the gym and, and been one of those those lads in the gym, which is I've had to keep an eye on to make sure I'm beating his times or beating his scores and stuff like that as amateurs. So uh, no, it's great, honestly amazing to, to have me and him both on the same card. And in this kind of the close proximity of the bubble and working together, I mean, you've got Lawrence, you've got Anthony Fowler, obviously you've got Shane McGuigan and Josh Pritchard, you've got Lee Cutler. So it's like very much a homely feel for, for yourself for this week. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. You know, me and Fowler boxed on the last one in, in fight camp in August, so that was good. Um, we had uh, Shane and Pritchard there then as well. So then, um, yeah, now we've got Lawrence as well, and then I've got mates from back home. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's nice, keeps you nice and chilled for the week. But... Um, Come Saturday night, it'll be, you know, unfortunately I won't be able to watch Leeds. I might be able to catch it in the change room, but um, it'll be, be all about me getting getting the business done and then watching the boys do the work after. Let's talk about the main event. Lawrence Okoli goes for his first world title against Krzysztof Glavatsky. Um, very experienced campaigner. We know all about him at the top level. Uh, beat Marco Hook, boxed Usyk, um, had a MMA fight with Myris Bredis <laughs> in the World Boxing Super Series. Um, how do you see the fight going? Yeah, look, it's, it's, it's tough night's work. You know, Glowacki is he's tried and tested. It's not like he's at the end of his career in the sense of he's been knocked out convincingly by somebody who's you know not the best in the world. Um, he's only lost to you know to really really great cruiserweights. Um, but I believe Lawrence can be, be a, another great cruiserweight, and I think 
you know, on on Saturday night, I think the way Glowacki's style is, he's, he's quite wide of his shots, he loops him in and he comes like, sort of lunging in and Lawrence, I think, will walk him onto a shot and, uh, and get him out of there and I can't see it. I mean, I've said I can't see it going past five rounds a couple of times, so yeah, I'd be surprised if we see the second half of the fight uh, with regards to, to rounds. So yeah, five, rounds five or six at, at the latest. Now, obviously, you've not been doing too much work with Lawrence for Glavatsky. Southpaw, but you have done plenty of work with him over the period of time that he's been in McGuigan's gym. You're probably in, maybe apart from Shane, or, or maybe even more so than Shane, the best position to discuss kind of his progression and his development since he's moved over to Shane. What are kind of the key factors you think he's improved? He's, he's using his jab a lot more in the sense of using it to land a shot and, and keep people at bay rather than just hanging it out there and just using it as a yardstick to let the right hand go. Um, but also all of his punches developed, his right, he's developed, his, his body shots are developing. Um, whereas before, sometimes you saw he sort of just headhunted because he's got that power. But, um, but yeah, and also his left hand in general, his left hook's coming on really well. I've seen him hurt people in the gym with the left hand. Uh, with the left hook and stuff and just the varieties there um, and he's more calm but also his inside game you know got a lot of slated a lot over the years uh, for the Askins and the Chamberlain fight but he's improved that you know I obviously when I'm when I'm uh, sparring him and get on the inside a lot as much as I can and I feel like that's where I'm going to have my success so we've done a lot of work on, on that like not specifically on that but for me, it is specific because that's that's my best uh, chance of success against him, uh, and it helps him out because that's what people are going to do against him. So, um, there's in time games improved a lot. He's a lot cleaner now. He's a lot more effective, and uh, he's he's developing superbly. We had him on the podcast recently, Boxing Social podcast available now on Boxing Social YouTube channel, Spotify and Apple Podcasts. I thought I'd just throw that in there. Um, and he said that when he first came to the gym on the very first day. I don't want to say people were taking the piss out of him, but something like that with regards to his holding. Um, obviously, I understand the family vibe of McGuigan's gym. Um, yeah, talk to us a little bit about that. You said yourself, Josh Pritchard, any time he was holding, he was um, reprimanded, should we say? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think it was me as, as such, but you know... He named you specifically. <laughs> uh, you know what Shane's like. He's just a joker, so... But he jokes, but he's not joking. Like, he's one of them, like, laughs at it. But he's like, <laughs> no, I'm being serious. So it's like, you can't do that. You can't hold. You can't hold Lawrence. Stop holding Lawrence. Because he understands, Shane understands the game from both an effective standpoint and a fan's standpoint. People were, didn't want to watch Lawrence. Um, but you look at his last fight and how he, he blew, the, blew the guy out of there. Uh, it was a lot more exciting. Um, and he's becoming a more exciting fighter, but not in a way that's you know uh, detrimental to his to him winning the fight. He's still you know being very effective at what he's doing. He's working on the inside. So yeah, I think uh, I think Shane and, and Pritchard gave him a lot of stick. Stop holding, none of that cuddling and, and all that sort of stuff. So that was uh, but that's just that's McGuigan's gym for you. It is indeed. I, I'm, I'm certainly uh, somebody who receives my fair bit of stick when I'm in the gym as well, rightly so. Um, you've sparred more rounds with Lawrence Cody than anybody since he's gone to that gym. How hard does he punch? You've sparred heavyweights, you've sparred other world-class cruiserweights like Myris Bredis, etc. Where does Lawrence's punching power rank with the guys that you've sparred? Yeah, one punch power, he's, he's probably the you know the heaviest heaviest guy I've, I've sparred. You know, he's just sort of that 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 one punch power and that's that's what it is it's just that that knockout strength and he uh but also his touches now are, like his, his lesser shots have, have got i think that's something else he's developed really well is everything's weighty he was obviously a massive massive cruiserweight anyway and he's got big arms he's strong um so he's just got to you know not try for the power because it's it's there uh, and i think that's key on on saturday is just being accurate and letting the natural power you know come through uh through with speed and accuracy now, those are the things that he's added to his bow in the ring. Outside of the ring, he's also become an author and a rapper. What, first of all, what do you make of his new tune, TKO, available now on... Well, actually, we've got it on Boxing Social. Go watch it on our channel. Uh, what do you make to his rap song? It hasn't he released a couple now? I can't he's, released a, he's released a few. He's, he's got everything going on at the minute, Mr. Riccoli. Yeah, he, look, he's, there's not much he, he can't seem to do. He's, got, uh, he's, he's rapping, he's, he's wrote a book. Uh, I think I read a headline the other day where he's gonna, he wants to be a movie star, wants to become, wins a world title. Look, he, he can do it, and uh, the, you know, the sky isn't the limit for him. It's beyond. He, he keeps, 
he, his confidence is there and he, he's really growing um, in, in life in general, not just as a boxer. So, uh, no, fair play to him. He's going to win a world title on Saturday night and I think that's the most important thing to him. Um, and then, yeah, and then, you know, like I said, anything the world and beyond is, is, seems to be his oyster. I mean, you're a confident guy, but you're, you're kind of humble. Not to say that Lawrence isn't humble, but he's a very gregarious character. He's a larger-than-life man. How has that kind of affected or rubbed off on you guys in the gym and having that kind of, that additional source, should we say, to McGuigan's gym? Yeah, look, it's great to have, you know, confidence breeds confidence and success breeds success, and that's what we're about in the gym. We're about doing everything right. Um, like I've said before uh, on the I think it was a call yesterday that one of the media calls we did was that the since day one I've been in the gym you train like a world champion like I was fighting four rounders but I was training like a world champion and that's just the way it is and that's why Shane has so much success and that's what we're all in so uh, all that success is breeding success and with the success comes confidence and with the confidence comes more success so it's a uh, it's a nice little circle that we've got going on and everyone in the gym like I said foul is the same Lawrence is the same, we're all helping each other and, um, and that all comes from Shane uh, and, and Barry to be fair, you know, the whole gym is, is, is set up and everyone's got the same philosophy and we all work towards it and it, and it, it it's paying off. Lawrence going to get you on one of his rap songs? I doubt it, I'm not, I mean, as much as I love my grime, I do love, you know, obviously my entrance tune is Kano, um, I don't think I've got any rapping skills, uh, I could play some acoustic guitar maybe three or four <laughs> chords a few for a song if he wants that but uh no but there is the guy called the gentleman b rhymer i think which you know he's he's you should check him out as well i think him and lawrence should do a little collab <laughs> we look forward to that hopefully we can find a home for that on boxing social let's finish with yourself um this won't be the first time we catch up this week but let's finish with yourself all being well, you come past the, the very dangerous Vasil Dukar this weekend. What does the rest of 2021 look like in your head, should we say? Forget COVID and all of the realistic stuff. What would you like in 2021? Um, look, I, I'd love, like I said, I would love a show in Bournemouth. Um, I'd love the Tommy McCarthy fight. I think that makes sense. We're both, you know, fighting the matchroom shows and we're both, um, we're both at that level, same level. I've seen he's got a defence against somebody next, uh, somebody from Europe next in, uh, for, the, for the title. So he's, uh, which he should come through. Um, and I'd love, yeah, I'd love, love, that, um, love that fight. But yeah, it's, the, 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 it's, it's Wednesday. So I'm very close to fight night. So my focus on Saturday. But um, I just want to just keep fighting, be as active as possible and just keep climbing up some rankings and, uh, and just see where we go. OK, well, Chris Billum-Smith, always a pleasure to catch up with you, even more so not to have to do it on Zoom. Um, look forward to catching up with you, I'm sure, uh, more than once for the rest of the week. Uh, thanks very much for speaking to Boxing Social. Nice one. Cheers, mate. <laughs>